Hey y'all, it's Lindsay. We bought a whole beef earlier this year and I asked for all of the fat, all of the bones, literally everything so that I could render my own tallow here at home and I could make things like bone broth, I could make things like the bone marrow, roast that, all kinds of stuff. But today I wanna to show you how I am making my home rendered beef tallow. This is some of the suet from our beef and Let's get started. I've got my station here set up. I'm gonna be using my Instant Pot to render down this tallow. You can use a pot on your stove, whatever you like. I've got a cutting mat right here that I'm going to be taking these chunks of suet and making them very small. This will make the tallow render more quickly and I will wind up with a lot of really delicious tiny little cracklins that you season with salt after the fact, which makes this like doubly fantastic. I also have a cookie sheet that is lined with a little bit of paper towel and a strainer to scoop out all of my cracklins. This allows me to just like get them here, drain them and salt them up when I'm ready to do that. And for now, let's go ahead and get started making this into tiny little pieces. I do like to use a flexible cutting mat so that I can easily pick up my whole mat and scrape it into my Instant Pot. And I'm going for like smallish rice sized pieces here. The smaller, the faster it will render. If you would like to get your own beef suet, but you don't have plans to purchase a whole beef anytime soon, consider going by your local butcher or the meat counter at your local grocery store and asking them if they have suet that you can purchase or that they can give to you. If they don't have any at the time, ask them if they'll take your number down and give you a call when they do. Um, it never hurts to ask. That's like the biggest piece of all of this is just always being willing to ask. The worst they can do is tell you no, um, and then you can move on to the next spot. I've got about one quarter of my bag of suet all chopped up here. So I'm gonna get this into my Instant Pot and then we're gonna put it on the saute function to let this start to render. While that starts to render, I'm gonna go ahead and continue chopping up more suet. I'm gonna let this all render down on a low to normal temperature here on the saute function. And as this m continues to render, some of those little chunks will start to fry in the fat. And those will be the cracklins and I'll start to pull those out when they look crispy and golden brown. Thank you. 
as I'm straining out these cracklins. I wanna move quickly so that I can get some real salt, which is the salt that I use here in my house, on them as quickly as possible. The salt will stick way better when they are hot and fresh. Uh, compared to if you let them cool down quite a bit. I do have a discount code and an affiliate link in my description box below for the Redmond Real Salt. It has not been depleted of all of its micronutrients, which is one of the main reasons why I really like using it. The other reason is that it comes from the mines over by the Salt Lake. So it's a quote unquote local-ish kind of salt. Cracklins are all managed and now we are ready to purify the tallow. I have a fine mesh sieve and a coffee filter to really clear out any of the particulates hanging out in the tallow. I will need to purify this a second time. This is just our first step in the process. And I'm just going to allow all of that tallow to filter through my coffee filter. If you notice the tallow isn't really moving through the coffee filter, switch for a fresh one. You can also use a piece of paper towel or separate two ply paper towels to allow this process to go a little quicker. I have done my first strain on all of this tallow and I'm gonna let this cool down here on the counter for a little while and then it's going into the fridge to re-solidify for the next step. In the meantime, we have a whole bunch of salted cracklins. Super jazzed about these. These taste so good. A little bit of salt. Mm. You should try them. My tallow is solidifying quite nicely and now it's cool enough that I can stick this in the refrigerator. There is a layer of sediment at the bottom which I will need to scrape off, but that's kind of difficult to do when this is not super cold. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge, let it sit overnight, and tomorrow I will scrape that off and show you my next steps. All right, here is the cold tallow. As you can see, that sediment layer is still down there at the bottom. I'm gonna use a knife to pry some out. This extra tallow you see on top is just a little bit of extra that I had drained off the cracklins and poured on top because I don't like to waste tallow. It's a valuable resource. The tallow comes out of my container really easily and I'm gonna now use my blade and start to scrape off all of this sediment from the bottom you can easily use a spoon if you are more comfortable with that. We're just going to discard all of this. Now that I have scraped off as much sediment as I can, I'm gonna cut my tallow into some chunks to allow it to melt more quickly. I'm going to get all of that cut up tallow back in my Instant Pot. When we first rendered the tallow, we did a dry method so we could eat the cracklins afterwards. Now I'm going to use a wet method so we can more effectively purify it. I've got about a cup, maybe a cup and a quarter of water here that I'm gonna pour on top of the tallow. And I'm gonna add in about a palmful of real salt. I'm gonna pop this lid back onto the Instant Pot and use the saute function to get all of this tallow back to its liquid state. Now 
Now that it's all liquefied, I'm gonna pour this into a bowl and allow it to come back to room temperature. As it cools, the water has a higher density than the tallow and the salt along with the water will start to draw all of the impurities down to the bottom of our bowl. Once it's room temperature, I'm gonna pop this in the fridge to solidify the tallow. I'm going to pop the tallow cake, if you will, out of my bowl here, being mindful that there is water on the bottom of this, so it's likely to spill out, so use caution. And as you can see, there is some of the sediment down there on the bottom of that tallow cake. All of that brown liquid in the bottom of my bowl shows that my purifying process is successful. I'm gonna scrape off as much of that sediment as possible, dry it off a little bit with a paper towel so that I can really get rid of all of that um, extra stuff that I don't necessarily want. I'm not using this for body care products, so having a tiny bit of leftover sediment is not the end of the world. I'm gonna do one last melt on my tallow so that I can easily pour it into my canning jars. So while this tallow continues to melt down, I'm gonna get the rest of my tools and supplies ready to go for canning it, or at least like getting it into jars. I have two quart-sized jars here that I'm gonna put it in. I have two lids. I do have this little canning funnel. This is actually like a regular mouth jar canning funnel, but it's gonna work just fine and dandy. I also have my same mesh sieve and some paper towels I'm gonna use as my filter. I'm gonna wrap up the piece of paper towel into my strainer here and then stack all of these things together so that I can get one final strain on the tallow and really get it clean. Then I'm gonna use some vinegar here, wipe around the lid so I can get a nice clean seal using my jar lids and that will cover it for what I need here. I'm gonna let these jars rest on the counter until they have cooled completely. And once they are fully cooled, I keep these on my pantry shelf. You can store them in the refrigerator, use them to fry food, and use it in the place of butter. Tallow is just one of those really awesome fats that I already have access to from buying a whole beef, and I'm not gonna let it go to waste. 